Hi, my name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness. Today we're going to move through a pretty short, but hopefully decently intense heart opening sequence. So the first three months postpartum, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and pause that, re rewind it a little bit. Let's just say for the first six months to a year, you are rounding forward like this, whether you breastfeed or you bottle feed. And even once you're not even breastfeeding, you're still having to hold the kid and everybody's up front. So the whole time your body is rounding forward. So what happens here? These muscles, they shorten up, they get tighter, and then that puts a lot of stress along the low back and the upper back. So today I thought I would spend just about 30 minutes moving, warming up the body, of course paying attention to our core and warming that up, getting a little bit of strength here, and then ultimately just focusing on opening up our heart with heart openers. I'll definitely be, be paying attention and mindful of other, other issues that new moms might have, like being on your belly, things like that. So join me today in a pretty brief flow that will hopefully open up your heart. So let's get started in child's pose. We're going to bring the toes together at the back of the mat. This time we're going to leave the knees together and just fold forward over those knees, hands pressing into the mat. Really try to activate along the back body here. As you push the hands into the mat, roll, roll those shoulders down and away from the ears and think about the belly. Really, really try to bring that belly button to spine. You'll find that when you do that, that action of pressing the hands into the mat, bringing the belly in, that's gonna help to sink those hips down a little bit further. Let's do one more breath, just being thankful for the time that we have to practice. And then from here, we're going to move up to a tabletop. And let's go ahead and move through our cat cows. I love a good cat cow. It's like a great way to, to get the rust out, so to speak. So you're going to drop the belly, look up, and then round through the spine. Picture that Halloween cat. Belly's in. Now you move with your breath, inhaling maybe to cow, exhaling to cat, or you could be the exact opposite. That's not important. The important part is just moving with your breath. So we're going to come to stillness here, and then we're going to do a really fun heart opener. So we're going to slide those hands back to the outsides of the knees. They're going to come about in line with the feet, lift the hips, opening up the chest, let the head go. Nice. Okay, set it down. Come on forward. We're going to bring the hips down towards the mat and come into a really, really nice and easy cobra. All right, belly's in. Let's roll it on back. Hands sliding to the heels, maybe beyond by the toes. Lift the hips. Let the head go if you can. And then dropping the hips down, sliding the hip. Hands forward. Go ahead, drop the hips towards the ground. Chest is forward, shoulders back. Easy back bend. Nice. All right, let's do that one more time. Just moving along the spine, sliding the hands back. Maybe your hips go up a little bit higher and then drop them down again. Coming forward, last one of these nice and gentle back bends. All right, from here, let's come back to our tabletop. Knees stacked beneath the hips, hands stacked beneath the shoulders. And let's going to go ahead and do our spinal balance. I love these. They're really great about building some heat along the back body. Let's go ahead. Check in here with your hips. Make sure they're square. Lift that right leg up. Bring that left hand forward. Hold the belly in. One more breath. And let's do five crunches here. Knee to elbow. One, two, three, two more. We got this. Four, and five. Bring it out. Now, we're going to try to reach around, grab that foot if you can. Pull a nice little twisting heart opener, and it's a great balance posture. Releasing here. Set that hand down. Set the knee down. Move through a couple rounds of cat-cow. Your breath, maybe you go side to side, do some barrel rolls, whatever feels good to you. And now let's do that on the other side. Ground down through the right knee. Shoot the left leg back, 
hand comes around behind, check in, try to make sure they're square, lift that left leg up, right hand comes out in front, remember the belly, try to keep it strong, and don't let that left arm lock out. Five of these, one, two, three, four, last one, five, nice. Hands come out in front, then reach behind you. Try to grab that left foot and balance here. Nice heart opener, little bit of twist, great balance. Releasing this, and then set the hands down to cat cows or barrel rolls, your choice. And when you are ready, I'll meet you in our very first downward facing dog. Go ahead, lift the hips, heels go back. They may or may not touch the ground today. That's not important. What's more important is that your belly stays engaged. It's lifting up towards the spine. Your gaze is towards your belly button. This will help you to relax your neck. So let's go ahead and shimmy that left foot towards the center of the mat, a little bit closer to the right. We're going to lift that right leg up, bend the right knee, and twist this out. So this is opening up across the front body. You should feel this in the hip flexors, maybe along the side body a little bit. Try to keep those shoulders square. Maybe you look under your left arm, see that right foot. Straighten that right leg, plant it down beside the left, and let's lift that left leg up. Bend that left knee, open up to the side. One more breath. Great. Bring straighten the left leg. Drop it down. Look between those hands. Walk your way forward to a standing forward fold. From here, we're just going to hang out for a few breaths in this nice forward fold or rag doll. Let it feel pretty good so those knees need to be bent as much as your hamstrings require. Belly stays in. Next inhale brings us all the way up. And let's bring our hands up and overhead. Nice stretch. Awesome. So I'm going to turn my back to you so you can see my hands. I'm going to grab hold of my left wrist with my right hand, reach the hands up high, shift my hips towards the left as I reach my hands towards the right. Try to keep your shoulders square. Try to cre keep length in the right side body. Let's do one more breath. Great. Grabbing coming up and grabbing hold of the other wrist. Pull it up towards the sky, shift the hips towards the right, and reach those hands towards the left. Chest is proud here, ladies, as the shoulders stay square. One more. Awesome. Coming up. Now we're going to clasp our hands, and we're going to make a fist. Release the pointer fingers, crossing the thumbs, so it's like we're making a very nonviolent gun, right? So make sure those toes are together, lengthen through the tailbone. We're going to be pushing the hips forward as we squeeze the ears with our biceps, looking forward and try to reach those fingertips towards the sky and a little behind you. A very, very, very gentle back bend. I'm taking it really easy because it's very early. One more, squeeze those ears. Excellent. Inhaling up and let's forward fold. Inhale, let's come up halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, walk those feet back, and we're going to move through our vinyasa. So that's high plank, or you can be on your knees, high plank, low plank, or you can be off your knees, low plank. You can come into a little bitty cobra, or you can come all the way to an upward facing dog. Yogi's choice on these vinyasas. We're going to do two more to downward facing dog. Belly's in here. Really push the mat away from you so your hands are going forward and out as your heels are going back and out. Inhale, let's look between those hands, walk those feet forward, half lifting, bellies in, exhale, fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. This time we're going to reach our hands overhead, try to make that gun with your fingertips. Reach your hands a little higher and try to do that back bend a little more. Shift the hips forward as you lengthen the tailbone down. Squeeze the legs together. Awesome. Coming up and forward fold. 
halfway lift, pull those shoulders back, and then plant the hands, walk the feet forward. We're moving through your vinyasa. I'm going to come up to my toes, come down to a chaturanga, upward facing dog. Try to keep the thighs off if you're doing that. And then downward facing dog. Two breaths here. This time, really think about the belly in. This time, really think about stretching through the hammies. One more. Great. Look forward. Come on forward. Half lift. And let's fold. Now we're going to come up one vertebra at a time. And this time, best back bend yet. Reach those hands back. They're up. They're clasped. And this time, let's see if we can get Maybe you have ceiling tiles. Maybe you can just see six inches further back. Push the hips forward a little bit more. Awesome. Coming up. And now forward fold. Inhale here. And this time plant the hands and go ahead and step that left foot to the back of the mat. And let's come into a crescent lunge. Lengthen through the tailbone. Use your belly to pull yourself up. Remember in this crescent lunge, if you're still working on strength, you can stay down here on this left knee. Your hands can stay on the right knee at your heart center, or they can be up. Yogi's choice. So from here, we're going to clasp those hands behind us. Pull the hands down towards that left heel, lifting your chest proud. But try not to collapse in the low back by sticking the bottom out just like that. That hurts your back. So keep that tailbone lengthening, reaching the left knee down towards the ground, hands out towards the heel, and the chest up and proud. Feel that great stretch across the front body. One more breath. Beautiful. Releasing this, hands up, hands to heart center now, and let's twist it out. Left hand, left elbow to the outside of that right knee. You guys know I love some twists. Sink into that right knee a little bit more. Maybe you gaze at the right big toe. Maybe you gaze over the right elbow. One more breath. Great. Inhaling back up to your crescent lunge. And now let's open up. Warrior two. This time that left foot is parallel to the back of the mat. Try to keep your arms parallel to the mat and sink into that right knee. We're going to move into a peaceful warrior to stretch out that right side body. Left hand down, right hand up. Gaze can be at the right fingertips or down towards the left fingertips. Yogi's choice. Keep that bend in the right knee. One more. Awesome. Inhaling back to warrior two. On your exhale, you're going to come into your extended side angle. So right elbow to the right knee as the left hand reaches forward. Try to keep a long straight line from the outside of that left foot all the way through your rib cage, out through the left fingertips. One more breath. Awesome. So now we're going to come into a half bind. This also opens up the chest. Left hand reaches around behind, maybe grabs the right inner thigh. If you can, while keeping your chest open, take the weight off of that right leg. That's just juicing it up along the right thigh. If you want to go for the full bind, you may. Just try not to. A lot of times people bind and bring their head forward. If you're going to bind, keep your head reaching for the back of the mat. You still get all the benefits of the pose staying here in this half bind, low belly in. Your right leg should be talking to you. Let's listen to it one more. Awesome. Inhaling back to your warrior two. And let's go ahead, plant the hands on either side of that right foot. Come up to the left toes. Move through your vinyasa or go straight to down dog. One breath here, one breath out. Now we're bringing that left foot forward into our crescent lunge. Sink that right knee down as you lengthen through the tailbone, belly's in. Remember, you can stay down here on this right knee. Totally okay. That actually can kind of be a little bit more of an opening for that right hip flexor, but more importantly, it helps you to build some strength. Reaching those hands up high. We got a little bit of rain. Nice and cool. Go ahead, clasp the hands behind your back. Pull the hands back as you lift your chest up. Try not to collapse in the low back so you're lengthening through the tailbone even here. 
sink into that left knee a little bit more. One more. Beautiful here. Back up to your crescent lunge. And then hands to heart center. Let's twist this out. Right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Try to get your thumbs in between your breasts. Maybe they touch your breastbone. Sink into that left knee a little more as you reach energy out through the right he heel. Try to get your ponytail or the back of the head to the wall behind you. You can look at your left toes or you can look over your left shoulder. One more breath. Awesome. Let's come back to crescent lunge. And then we're going to open up warrior two. Right heel, right foot is parallel to the back of the mat. Arms are parallel to the ground. Lengthen through the tailbone here as you keep the low belly in and up. Let's do our peaceful warrior. Right hand down, left hand up. Really energy out through those left fingertips. You can look at that right toe or up towards the left fingertips. Keep that left knee bent really strong. One more breath. Okay, warrior two. And then extended side angle. Left elbow to right thigh, right hand reaching to where the wall and the ceiling meet. You remember, you want that one long line of energy from the outside of that right heel all the way out through the right fingertips. Your gaze can be at those left toes or all the way up at the right fingertips. I'm going to take the right hand around and behind, grab, grab hold of the left inner thigh. Great opening for the chest. The gaze can be up and over that right shoulder, or it can stay down for balance. Remember, if you go for the full bind, make sure you bring the back of your head forward. That's really going to help to intensify the side body stretch. It's not necessary. You still get all the benefits of this heart opening just holding the inner thigh. One more breath here. Releasing that bind, warrior two. And on the exhale, we're windmilling our hands down. Moving through our vinyasa. Beautiful. Okay, so we've built a little bit of heat. Let's start to work on those backs. So we're going to bring the right foot forward. Go ahead and ground down through the left. Let's enjoy this hip flexor stretch for just a moment. And now we're going to lift ourselves up here in this modified crescent lunge. Bring the hands up high, and now we're doing that same action we did at the beginning of the class in our mountain pose. Bring the hands together, make our little nonviolent gun, sink into that right knee. Try not to sink in the low back. Keep the belly strong as you grow ahead and stretch that left hip flexor, and now reach the hands towards the wall behind you overhead. Try to keep the shoulders relaxed here. Sink down a little more. Awesome. Come on out. Go ahead, ground the hands. Sink into that left hip flexor a little more. Now, if you'd like, we can grab that right hand around and behind and grab that left heel. Left foot, maybe. Maybe the left ankle. Feeling this front body stretch along the hip flexor, twisting it out and opening across the shoulders. Plant that left foot down. Go ahead, straighten that right leg little bit of a hammy stretch for you. Okay, ground through those hands. We're going to balance challenge, ab challenge. We're going to come up to the left toes. Now think to yourself, I can do this. We're going to pick up that right foot, send it to the back of the mat, and move through a vinyasa. Left foot's going to come forward, right knee down. Really stretching into that right hip flexor as we come up to this modified crescent lunge. Hands come up overhead. Reach those hands up high. Fingertips, pointer fingers together, thumbs crossed. Sinking into that right hip flexor as we reach our hands up and back. See if you can point those fingertips and get them a little closer to the wall and the ceiling behind you. Stretching in that right hip flexor as we bend into the back. One more. Beautiful here. Let's come on forward, straighten that left leg, and enjoy this left hamstring stretch. Oh.
Okay, come on forward. Big, big, big bend in that left knee as we reach the left hand around. Grabbing that right heel. Okay, from here, bring the hands down. Remember that abs extra credit. So ground down through the toes, bellies in, pick that left foot up, set it down at the back of the mat, move through your vinyasa. I tell you what, that little bit of rain my, made my mat really slippery. Look back to your toes, bellies in, it makes that transition super easy. Now look up to your hands and we're gonna come bring our bottoms down to the ground by our hands. So you can do that by walking right foot to the left wrist, left foot to the right wrist, sitting down crisscross applesauce. So before we move into any deeper back bends, let's really work up our core. We're gonna ground those feet down, hips width distance apart. You guys probably know where I'm going, boat pose. So remember, boat number one, you can hold on to your knees as you let yourself lean back 45 to 60 degrees. If you are really, really close to postpartum, you know, six weeks, eight weeks out, stay here. If it's been a long time, even if it's been 16 years, but you haven't done any boats, stay here until you can safely hold this with a flat back. If you rush your boat and you round your back, that equals low back pain, and we don't want low back pain. So belly's in, low belly's in, holding it here. If you can hold this with a safe and reliable straight back, maybe you lift one leg, maybe you lift the other. Maybe you can straighten them. None of, you do not have to be at this full expression to get all the benefits of the pose. You can be here, here, or here. What's more important is that you honor where you are and, and give yourself some grace. Maybe you could do this before you had the baby. You'll get back to it, I promise. Now let's go ahead and drop that right leg, let it hover. So here we are, boat with the left, canoe with the right, back is still straight. Right leg up, left leg down. Try to at least think that you're happy. Left leg up, right leg down. Right leg up, left leg down. Let's do that one more time. Left leg up, right leg down. Right leg up, left leg down. Bring that left leg up. You can go ahead and ground the hands behind you as we slowly extend those legs out to canoe. Hold it here. Really great modification to help build the lower muscles of the belly that get really stretched out postpartum. Let's just lift them both up together. Your knees can be bent to do it, or you can do it straight. On the inhale, come up, whoo, and then set it all the way down. Push yourself up to seated. Those abs are nice and warm now, right? So we're gonna cross those feet and come up to our knees and come into a camel pose. Camel pose is intense. It's really intense, but I love doing it, especially when I am hunched over a lot with you know breastfeeding sick baby just a baby in general you're like this all the time so camel is like the antidote to all that rounding forward to move into camel you want two fists in between your knees you bring your hips up you can be on the tops of the toes or you can be up on your with your toes grounded most important thing is that you don't stick your butt out make sure you lengthen through the tailbone belly's in your hands can be here at heart center as you just drop your head. That can be camel. You want to keep your hips forward. If you're ready for more, press those hands into the hips. Po hands can be in your yoga pockets or down. Press the hips forward, squeeze the elbows together, and maybe roll the shoulders forward. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but when you roll them forward, it helps to create a little more space for the low back. And then maybe you reach your right hand back, left hand back, Woohoo, we got our heels. Look up. Hold this for three to five breaths. When you're done, you're going to go ahead, sink the hips, and maybe reach those hands forward in a nice and gentle forward fold, just creating some space in the tailbone. We're going to do that one more time. Inhale coming up, two fists between the, the knees, press the hips forward. And then you're going to push the hips forward as you reach your hands back, chest stays forward. And then once you've got your heels, maybe you let your head go. Try to hold this for another two breaths. Inhale, bring your head up. Go ahead and come up, sink your hips back. And let's come into a downward facing dog just for a moment.
beautiful back bends. From here, we're going to move into some side stretches to make sure that we've got our back going forward, backwards. Now we're coming over to the side. So this is going to be called gate pose, another version of gate. That left leg is going to extend out to the side, and you're up on the right knee. So kind of like half camel, half wide-legged fold, right? Left hand comes up, right hand reaches towards the mat. As you push your hips and your chest forward, this is a great side body stretch. One more breath. Inhale coming up. Let's go ahead, ground that left knee down. So you can go ahead and set the right hand down as you reach the right foot up. I mean right foot down, right hand up. Shift those hips forward. That'll really get you some good stretch along that right oblique area. All the way through the intercostal muscles and the ribs. Inhale coming up. And from here, we're going to come into a child's pose just for a moment. So when you're ready, you're going to go ahead and cr crawl your feet forward, come back to your hips, and come to a comfortable seated position. We're going to do two more back bends. They're either going to be a bridge or a wheel. I had to move my mic just a bit. So for a bridge, you're going to come down to your back. Make sure you can feel your hip heels. Your heels are hips width distance apart. Then you're going to lift your hips. I like to say channel your inner 80s workout video. So push those hips up, and then maybe you shimmy your shoulders closer together. Remember, your chest comes to your chin, not your chin to the chest. You can stay here for five to ten breaths. Ways that you can amp up this wheel, it also helps to get your glute involved, is you shimmy the left foot a little towards the center and reach the right foot up, but try not to let the hips sink. We'll do that on the other side. Remember, these are all just steps. If you can't lift your leg yet, you stay here and bridge. The most important thing is to build the strength in the back body. As you lift those hips, opening up across the chest. Let's do two more breaths. One more. From here, you gently lift those heels, slide the back down. Next, we can do one more bridge, or if you'd like, I'll demonstrate a wheel for you. The setup is the exact same. You want to be able to touch the heels with your fingertips. Now your hands come up and they press into the mat above your shoulders. Fingertips are basically facing your shoulders. You want to try to get the strength to have your elbows straight up, but at first that's really hard, very, very shoulder intensive, so if they're out a little bit, that's okay. Inhale, lengthen through the tailbone, and then push your body up. Holding this for at least five breaths. You can do those same drills by lifting the right leg and then lifting the left leg. Try not to let the hips sink. Or you can hold this bridge. Sometimes remaining static is so much more difficult than moving. One more breath here. Nice. From here, we come out of this. Give yourself a nice hug. Maybe you roll over to one side. Maybe you roll over to the other. And let's come into a nice happy baby, grabbing hold of the outsides of those feet and pulling those knees down to either side of the rib cage. Lengthen through the tailbone here in this happy baby, and you'll feel a super juicy stretch in the hamstrings as well as the hips. And it's a nice release for the low back. From here, we're going to go ahead, give those knees a squeeze one more time. And then we're going to go ahead, extend those legs out. Go ahead and let them be mats with distance or wider. Palms up and enjoy a nice, juicy Shavasana. You guys worked really hard today, really working on opening up the heart and strengthening the back body. Honor that practice. Be grateful for the body that you have and enjoy this Shavasana. Until the next time, I hope you guys keep practicing, keep loving on those babies, and keep getting stronger. Namaste.